question is that the amendments be agreed to, and I call the Honourable Member for Dawson. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And I rise today to speak about this once again a bad bill put up by Labor. No surprises here. What sort of message does this send to our younger people? The people that we want to work to save their money for their retirement, what's, 30, uh, what's $3 million going to look like in 30, 40 years' time? There is no indexation to this bill. That is one of the biggest single issues with this whole bill. And the move from a 15 per cent tax to a 30 per cent tax, straight up. How was that designed? Is that just typical Labor Treasury mystical and magical stuff where you just <laughs> lick your finger and hope it all works hope it all works out? Where is the place of aspiration? Listen up, folks. This is a side of the house that we understand reward for effort where you actually get out of bed in the start of the day, where your wage isn't guaranteed, where you actually got to turn up, plant something, grow something, actually do something. There's no turn up pay on this side of the house. Those opposite are very, very confused for that. But typical, typical of Labor, when you can't manage your money, you come after hours. That's what you do. You've got form for it, but that's no big surprise to anybody. We've seen it time and time again. But it's not only the young folks. You've betrayed the older folks as well, the older generation, the older generation who've been said, go and work hard, put your money aside, save it for a rainy day. The rain probably doesn't affect those opposite because they get their money anyway. But they've got to just save their money for their retirement. Definitely a member for Blair, definitely a farmer, know fully about it, and thank you very much for the interjection. You need to save your money for retirement. That's what we tell them. So then those opposite with a stroke of a pen are just decide, oh bang, we'll have a bit more of that. We'll have a bit more of that. And that's particularly important to farmers. Now those opposite probably don't know oh, no. much about farming. They don't actually know what it's about. I don't know why you're so hard on primary producers. Why don't you like the miners, the farmers, the fishers? Why don't you do that? Oh, a lot more than you, champion. A lot more than you. But no. Look at the fishing industry. Are you across the fishing industry? You've just banned the gill nets. Wiped out the fishing industry. That wasn't a scientific decision. That was a political decision. Exactly the same as the live sheep trade. You've just taken out the live sheep trade. No wonder they're going to. No wonder you're not getting pre-selected next time, champion. You have no idea. I tell you what, it's very, very true. The live sheep trade. What's happening with that? Yeah, you're shutting it. Well done to you. That was going to put a base on the bottom end of the sheep. Yeah, 100%. And you're from over there. Don't worry. They'll come looking. They'll come looking for you as well. Yeah, you should back the people that Order. you're putting up. Don't worry about that. But don't worry. You, this, will be, this will be used to this. Broken promises. And this, again, is another one of the Prime Minister's broken promises. Despite making promises, no changes to the superannuation before the election, the Albanese Labor government is proposing to double the super taxes of one in ten Australians by the time they retire. Stopping companies, listen to this, Dr. Gordon, stopping companies from offering franking credits to Australian investors, super funds, and charities. Taxing unrealised capital gains in super, meaning Australian retirees will have to pay tax on money that they haven't even made yet. But we're used to broken promises from those opposite. Remember the $275 that those opposite promised we're going to come off the power bill? After 97 times, not a slip of the tongue, 97 times those opposite said you will be $275 oh, better off on your power bills. Noise. And what's happened to power? Just like everything else, 
It's gone through the roof. But don't worry, we all heard, my word is my bond. Remember those things, my word is my bond. That was solid, folks, that was solid. And then, foot out hours later, bang, total change around. More backflips of the Moscow Circus, but I tell you what, don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure that you're all right into that. There's no problem at all. What I don't understand is why you just don't like farmers. Oh, this no, there's too this much tax noise. is an affront on farmers. They don't know what a farmer is. Oh, no, they don't. It's, it's really, really tough to understand. So with the, with the unrealised capital gains, paying tax on paper gains, that is absolutely ridiculous. So I'll give you a real-life example, because on this side of the house we live in the real world. This will be something new for you. When you're a grazier, if a valuation is taken on a grazier's property and it goes up, you're asking them to pay the tax on the unrealised gain. Now that is absolutely ridiculous. That happens nowhere else. And that's exactly what you're asking to do. So on a large block of land, one large parcel, that person might be asset rich and cash poor. But if a valuer comes along and puts that extra valuation on there, they will have to pay that tax. So what's the answer to that? Do they have to subdivide a block off? Do they have to, do they have to cut it out? Do they have to sell the family farm or the, the property? Is that what they have to do? Have a good think about this. I hope you listen up because this is very, very important. These are the people that provide food and fibre for the country. They're the ones that feed you. I don't know why you're so hell-bent. Those opposite are so hell-bent on making life difficult for farmers. But I know where some of the money is going to go. Once you get this money, it's going to go towards those 36,000 bureaucrats that you're going to put in Canberra. Well done. How productive will they be? I know what they'll be doing. That's a good question, Member for Nichols. I know what they'll be doing. They'll be lying awake at night thinking of ways of getting more red tape and green tape to wrap around the productive people in this country. That's what they'll be doing. They'll be actually making sure that this make it all that harder for all of the people who actually contribute. That's who you should be looking after, the people who contribute, the people who feed us, the people who clothe us, the small businesses. They've got to get up every morning and make a dollar. Actually, you have to make a dollar. Their dollar is not guaranteed. And let's have a look a little bit more about this indexing. Let's have a look a few years ago. Well, what am I? I'm getting on a bit now, but say 30 years ago, what a house was worth. You could buy a house in my, my neck of the woods for 100 grand. Now they're close to, <laughs> now they're close to 500 grand. So $3 million in 30, 40 years is not going to be a terrible lot of money. And yet you want to then tax them. You want to tax them on that and tax them on the unrealised gain. It's absolutely ridiculous why you would do that. But we understand the taxing and look what happened today. You gag the debate on the new vehicles tax, on the family car and ute tax. You gag that debate today because you didn't want to see that. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Even a Corolla of, um, is going to have an uh, extra fee of about over 1000 bucks. let alone your Land Cruisers, and lots of people in my area drive Land Cruisers. You have to. Land Cruisers, Hiluxes, Ford Rangers. And you all want us to jump into EVs. Well, I'll tell you something very simple about the EVs. They can't carry the weight, they can't tow the load, and they can't cover the distance. So once again, just another tax and another shot at the hard-working Australians. Well, no debate at all. I don't know what you're all so frightened of. Why don't we have the discussion? Have the discussion about what we actually need to do here but this superannuation, this whole, this whole bill, it's absolutely abhorrent. It is absolutely abhorrent. We tell people, 
You know, what happens if they haven't got enough money? Then they're going to be forced back on the pension. That's not what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to save for your own retirement so then you can actually you'll not become a burden on society. And I know those opposite are very familiar with being a burden on society, but we on this side of the House actually need to make sure that we what's that? There's I tell you what, no one you're not getting pre selected. So anyway, let's move back to the bill without the indirect, without the uh, the help from that opposite. Because it's certainly it's certainly not helpful. We just need to I can understand. I can understand why they don't want to hear this about farmers. When we've got these people on this side of the house who are sticking up for farmers each and every day. Each and every day. And that's and that's exactly what we're doing. But so why would you want to do this? Why bring this bill in, apart from just a tax grab? I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to kill off all the self-managed super funds. Kill them off, make it all too hard for them, so you can have all big business, all big business that's unionised, so you can clip the ticket and get your money as it goes. That's a little cash cow that those opposite have been milking for a very, very long time. But you don't want to worry about self-managed super funds, what people on this side of the House who get out of bed and make a difference every day. No, let's look at the let's look at let, let's look at let's look at putting it all back into big business and then making the unionisation. And we, we see that all the time. We see that all the time. Whereas on this side of the house we're always supporting small business. Small business, because they are the backbone. They are the backbone of the nation. They're the ones that have to take the risk and get out of bed in the morning and actually make sure things happen. What happened to the idea in Australia of a fair go? That's what we need to do. Have a fair go, and this is certainly not a fair go. That someone further down the track, which is what's happening here, can, at the stroke of a pen, change all the rules change all the rules. So I've got three children, they're coming through and they're looking at this and going, gee, I might as well go overseas and take it easier. I'm, I, why should I be saving, saving my money for my retirement when we're going to get the, the absolute life tax out of it? It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. So I encourage those opposite to have a good look at this, particularly on the schedule one to three. And the rest of the schedule is yeah, there's some stuff, and there's not too bad. That's the schedule. That's that's actually what the bill is. I probably haven't actually read the ledge, but that, what's that? So, yeah, have a good look at have a good look at that. It's one to three. That there's certainly the other one's got a couple of whiskers on it, but the one to three is an absolutely shocking, shocking area. So, <laughs> thank you for your help. Thank you for your help. Let's go. Yeah, I'll be going for it. But thank you very much for your help. But just to go over it one more time, let's make sure that we fully understand that how bad this bill is. You need to you need to put it back on the drawing board. This bill will do absolutely nothing. The only thing it will do will undermine the integrity of the superannuation system, the system that was absolutely designed so you could save money for your for your retirement save money for your retirement so you don't become a burden on the system. And once you then start changing legislation just willy-nilly whenever you feel like it, after you promised, sorry, are those opposite promised that they wouldn't do it, at least, at least Minister Shorten had the guts to run it on election and say, well, I'm going to make these changes. And of course, the public didn't want to do that, and that's why Mr Short's not sitting there. But no, this current sneaky Prime Minister, what did he do? He decided, oh, I'll get in, tell a few little porky pies, and then I'll just slip this through, slip this through, and then just see how we go. This is bad legislation. It's bad for farmers. It's bad for the graziers. And for young people, it instills no confidence. Well, I don't think the young people have got confidence in this government anyway, and rightly so. That confidence is, is very well sound, uh, founded. But 
please get behind this. Make sure you vote against it. Come on, fellas. You got, can do it. Vote against it. Stand up to your party. That's it. Thank you. Authorised by Andrew Wilcox, LMP Mackay.